Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first of many Corelli Kronos XDR videos. I have wanted a Kronos XDR for a long time now. So this is the version two of the XTR. So they've made some changes. Corelli, you often hear people say, hey, you know, a company needs to listen. Corelli listened. They improved what needed to be improved upon as well as they decided, you know what, since we're doing this, let's just mod everything else. Let's just give them everything. And you're going to see when we get into that box and I get that body off what exactly I'm talking about. Because I don't think there's a truck on the planet that you get out of the box that looks like that one. Anyways, guys, we're going to unbox it. All right, guys, there it is, the Corelli Kronos XDR. Now, before I get the body off and show you guys everything that's underneath it, I just want to talk about one thing. It's funny that this truck came the way it came. So you watched me open the box, you watched me pull it out, you saw that the body was in a bag. But not only is the body in a bag, the body itself, and if you guys are wondering, like, wow, you know, the body looks good and all, but it looks a little flat, there's actually, guys, the protective film is still on it. So not only do you get, not only does the body come in a bag, it actually also has the protective film on it. So obviously you've got to remember that and know that that's happening or else you would start putting your stickers on and then realize that the film is on and pretty much then peel all the stickers off. So when you get this truck, just remember, you're going to have to remove the protective film. We'll do that in this video and then you can start applying the stickers. But let's go check out the truck. All right, guys, there it is, the Kronos XTR. Now, I got to get something out of the way first. You can probably see that there's a servo in here. And when I first took it out of the box, there wasn't. I took it out of the box and I was kind of getting myself ready, you know, kind of deciding what I was going to do. And I could not stand the, like the servo arm itself and the wheels and tires flopping back and forth while I was trying to move the truck. And I felt like, you know what, if this is driving me nuts, it would probably be driving you guys nuts also. So I went ahead and I installed the servo I had. It's an OMG. It's a 55 kilogram. It fit guys. Perfect. So everything that you see on here, I'll bring it up closer to the camera. Anything that you see kind of holding the servo in, the little rubber mounts and all that stuff came with the servo and there was enough room. Was there lots of room? No, but this is a pretty big servo, guys. So the fact that it went in without having to worry about looking, you know, for some aftermarket servo mount or something like that was great. And you can see exactly how it looks. You can see the 25 tooth aluminum servo horn. Really, really nice that they include a 25 tooth servo horn. Let's face it, that's what the majority of servos out there are. And I know we kind of jumped ahead, guys, and we're going to definitely backtrack here soon. But while we're on the subject of the servo, what was also very cool was installing the servo. So underneath the truck, I'm going to bring you guys in and see this. You've got these four screws. So you got these two millimeters right here, and then this 2.5 and this 2.5. Pull those out, and then this whole box comes out. You can then put your servo in, screw it down, run the wire into the servo box, and then literally just screw it right back in. I really, really like that. I found on a few other companies' trucks, you know, the mount's kind of awkward. It's either awkward to get to or trying to just get the servo in and route the wire can be a pain. This was probably one of the easiest ones yet. All right, so this is the part of the video, guys, that I usually would have done first, but I got excited installing the servo, wanted to get all that done. But now we can kind of rewind a little bit and talk about a few things. So when you get this truck, yes, it comes as an enroller. It's an XTR, which basically means you can add your own electronics. And you know what? I don't know if Crowley's watching this, but this is probably the one company that could have included electronics. I mean, obviously price accordingly, but could have included electronics because their RTR combo, so that rebranded Max 8 and their 2050 KV motor, which I still don't know what it is, is a fantastic combo. And again, like I'm, I don't know if I've mentioned guys already, but I had a V2 Dementor and that thing was insane. It was insane on 4S and it was an absolute animal on 6S. So again, Corelli is probably the one company that could have put their RTR electronics in this truck and people still would have been very, very happy. However, it does come as a roller, so don't let the servo fool you. Remember why I put that in. Now, in here we've got, or over here we've got the stock body. Still has the film on, like I've mentioned. Over here you can see there's two different sets of stickers. And the reason there's two different sets of stickers, those are obviously the ones for the orange body, is you have a clear body sitting right there. I think that is just crazy that Corelli is including another body because I often, guys, myself will buy a vehicle and think, wow, you know, the stock body looks really, really good. 
I just wish I had like a basher body or the other way around. I use the RTR body. It doesn't look as good and it would just be nice to paint up another body and usually you end up having to order one, pay for it and all that kind of fun stuff. So the fact that they are including that clear body with window masks and another set of decals is awesome. And I'm hoping guys to get that body done soon. I don't want to do anything crazy. I was looking through the paints that I had. I didn't really have what I wanted. I'm going to do something simple, guys, like a candy apple red, maybe a little bit of black, but that's it. Nothing crazy. I, I want something that I'm, I'm going to want to run and not mess up, even though I will be running both of these bodies. All right, so one last thing, guys, before we get into the truck. What you see in front of you is what's included. So you always get that little package with your manual and all that kind of stuff in it. We will go over the manual later in the video when we install the ESC in the motor, and we are going to be doing that, guys, in this video. So by the time this video ends, you'll know this truck. You'll know everything that makes it an XDR and you're going to see the electronics in it. We're going to power it up. Depending on the time, I have a feeling it's going to be late and dark out. We may take it for a quick rip in front of my house or something like that, but I wouldn't count on it. Anyways, in front of you, you have a 13 tooth pinion. You have the screws to mount the motor, screws to mount the ESC. These ones right here. You have another set of tethers and body pins and again the reason guys you have those is because you do have that other body so the stock body does already come with the tethers and the body pins on it but because they give you the other one they even give you the hardware for that one which i think is really really cool all right now that we got all that out of the way we can get into the truck and i can give you guys some of the details about this thing so we're gonna start underneath you got a 70 75 three millimeter chassis you have five millimeter front and rear shock towers both of those are also 7075. All the hinge pin carriers are three millimeter 7075 as well. You have aluminum chassis braces. So you have this big long one right here that goes to the rear, ties into the rear bulkhead. And then you've got this front one here. I'm going to be removing the battery tray over here, guys, in a bit. So you'll be able to get a better uh, side view of all this. You'll be able to see the carbon fiber bridge that runs along the bottom of the chassis and all that kind of stuff. It's very, very cool. And it's definitely something cool to see you have these massive turnbuckles. So it's kind of funny. When I first was looking at this truck, I thought to myself, the fronts look, you know, small. They are not. They are, I think they're somewhere around, guys, like 4.3 millimeters, which is pretty much almost the standard size for a lot of other bashers. But they look small when you look at those things, which are 5 millimeter turnbuckles. So they're very, very beefy, guys. Now, they did make some changes from the last shock. So the shocks that were on the previous Kronos or any of the V2 lineup, whether it be the Punisher or the Kronos non-XDR version, they now have the HD springs installed right away. So I know with my Dementor, even though the suspension felt very, very good, it was fairly soft. Now you can tell that they've got a heavy-duty spring in there, which is definitely going to help when you're you know doing those big jumps and you're landing. Super plus, glad they included them. You have four millimeter sh thick shock pistons, as well as guys, they improved the rod end. So you can see right now on the screen that it's a huge ball end. It's just massive, which is again, a really, really good thing because I do believe that that was unfortunately one of the weak points of some of the original trucks. So they've decided to beef that up. Super plus, glad they did that. All right, guys, since we're talking about parts that they improved, they now have the HD steering blocks. On my Dementor, which was a V2, I didn't have the problem. So a lot of people, what ended up happening is they take like a tumble and unfortunately their actual pillow ball right here would pull out. And I never had that issue. I also didn't take a ton of tumbles with my truck, but they did revise them. These are the HD ones. They have been out now guys for a few months and I have not seen anybody have any issues with them. So I think that problem has gone away. And again, that was Corelli listening to us. They were listening to the people saying, hey, this needs to be fixed. And well, that is exactly what they did. All right, before we get to installing the electronics, I just wanted to bring a couple of last things to your guys' attention. One is just like with the Skeeter, you have the spring steel out drives throughout. So everything is the spring steel. Uh, obviously in the front you have CVDs, so you just have the one sits here off the diff. But that guys is an option part for every other rig, even on the first, like the V1 Kronos didn't come with the, sp the spring steel out drives either. So that is very, very cool. 
the other thing, just like with the Skeeter, and hopefully I can get you guys to see this without bonking the camera, is you also have that twin plate steering rack, which again is just really, really cool, guys. Will definitely give a lot of durability there. Take, you know, kind of remove the stress from obviously the one by having the two kind of can more evenly distribute the load type thing. So that's definitely a plus. But what I'm going to do now is on this side, over here, we are going to remove the battery and the electronics tray so that one, I can give you guys a better look of the center braces and that carbon fiber bridge, but we're also going to get to installing the electronics and being able to mount the Max 8 because these screws will actually line up. All right, guys, so with the battery tray out of the way, you can definitely see that bridge a lot better. You can also see the spring steel diff cups. You can see the aluminum uh, center diff cup, CNC cut spur. But what I'm focusing on right now, guys, is the front and the rear chassis braces and then that carbon fiber center bridge that goes through that connects them so you've got one piece that's actually laid down here on the chassis and then you can see you've got this part right here where it connects the two braces again a huge amount of support and you know what it's funny because we haven't even talked about the huge tower to tower brace that is also on this truck all right so just like with the skeeter you have that huge center tower to tower brace now it's two pieces so you've got the one on the front bulkhead that connects right above the center diff and the same thing from the center diff right back here to the rear bulkhead i like this one it's a little bit different than the skeeter because it allows for a gps speed unit so if you got one of these things and you can see what mine looks like so if i had had this it probably wouldn't look this way anymore but you'd be able to basically just drop that in there so if you're doing speed runs or heck, even if you're trying to get altitude. So if you're jumping and you're trying to see how high you're going, obviously a setup like this is going to hold it a lot better than just sticking it or zip tying it. I don't know how many times I watch videos and the person does something and the GPS goes flying. I mean, heck, you see what mine looked like. So this is definitely guys an improvement as well as guys, you've got this little power button where you can actually mount your power button. Again, this is if you've got something like the Max 8 that looks like this, the Torax, which is the rebranded Max 8 that Corelli has, uses the same button. So I'm going to obviously guys route that up and that'll definitely make things a lot cleaner. I like that idea. It's better than having it kind of lay down here and stuff like that. So, but anyways, let's get the electronics. All right, guys, in typical fashion, I got excited when I was installing the electronics and I just decided to finish everything off. So ESC is mounted. All the four screws lined up perfectly. I think there was an issue. I remember watching Vaz's uh, original chronos xdr video and i know he had to kind of alter one of the holes to fit his esc because he was running a max 8 too and i did not have that problem at all everything lined up perfect i got the wire running underneath the battery tray you can see it down there and then up into the receiver box and you know what guys so far the only complaint i've seen the only thing that i would have changed is on the receiver box itself there's a pretty good size hole to bring your two leads through so the, your wires from the servo and your wires from the esc and there's no grommet or anything there so again being that a lot of electronics are waterproof now it would have been nice to see the receiver box sealed up a little bit better i went ahead and i don't know why i used grease when i have silicone as well but i just used some grease around the hole and around the leads just so that i could kind of close that off so that when i do get this thing up running and i'm running it in the snow and the snow starts to pack in here and stuff like that i won't have to worry about any of it coming up I still think it would be, you know, it would be hard for the snow and water to actually get up into the receiver box, but I still just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have that problem. All right, guys, at this point, I think all that's left is to get that film off of the body, get some stickers on there. All right, guys, there you go. I've got all the decals on. The truck is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the truck out actually in front of my house. Just give it a quick few rips up and down the street. I'll be able to see how everything feels. ESC, servo, all that stuff. Then what I might do is come back in, throw on the paddles, 
and go back out again. It is snowing right now, so there's not going to be any traction or anything like that out there, but I just really want to give this thing a quick rip. I want to see how it feels, so let's head outside.
right, guys, there it is, the first rip with the Kronos XTR. I say rip because really that was just in front of my house. I just ripped it around. I wanted to have some fun. I kept coming back. That's why there's so many cuts, guys, because for some reason there was more traffic than usual out there. I usually don't have that much traffic on my street, but today, yeah, for some reason the cars were out. So either way, guys, that was a ton of fun and it was super fast. I cannot convey, guys, how impressed I am with the truck, but also with that combo. A Max 8 2200 KV combo is not an expensive combo. And the fact that I was looking at purchasing, guys, the Castle 1650 combo, I am glad I didn't because this combo is working very, very well. The truck is super fast. You can see the wheelies, and that's on that road, guys. There's not a lot of really great conditions out there right now. There's not a whole lot of traction. The truck was still wheeling. It was still performing, yet it still felt light. It still felt nimble, and it still felt very controllable. I have trucks with bigger systems in it, and even though they perform awesome and I really enjoy them, they do feel like a heavier truck. This was not the case today. And the fact that that is half the price of that 1650 Castle combo, I am very, very impressed. I will not be changing out that combo, guys, for anything. Uh, running 13 tooth pinion, punches at three. Hey, it definitely hooked up and was a lot of fun. I was very, very surprised. And unfortunately, guys, I missed the backflip. I had the camera mounted to my radio and when I got in the air, I got a little excited and yeah, I missed that. But guys, that was just the first rip. We're going to be getting this thing out soon as weather permits and have a lot of fun. Run it on the stock tires, get the paddles back on it, run it in the snow. And obviously, guys, just like I do with everything else, try a couple other different sets of tires. But that is it, guys. There was, we did so much in this video uh, from the unboxing to initial impressions to getting the electronics installed to the first rip that you know what? I think this has gone long enough. And it's funny because as I'm standing here, I'm seeing the front and rear sway bars that we never talked about. I never talked, guys, about the bumper skid blade combos that they have that I think are amazing. And just all the little bits, the red washers, all that stuff. Yeah, there's just been so much going on that I missed some things. But there's going to be a lot of videos, guys, on this truck. We're going to be doing more things. We're obviously going to be getting the GPS on it. And I should mention too, because I have seen a few people talk about it. All these things, guys, for example, like this GPS mount, it's just two screws and it's kind of like a clamp that goes over the tube. So if you drop the GPS in it, went out, did some speed runs and stuff like that, and then said, hey, you know what? I don't want it on there anymore. Yeah, you can take it off. It's not a big deal. So anyways, guys, huge thanks to Corelli for sending me this truck. I have wanted this platform back and to get the version 2 Kronos XTR is even better. And that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and enjoy the pics.